uh, sorry, in IRC. <laughs> One day you will die. Oh no, the other days you won't though. Now, how you could spend those other days in a sensible way for a backup and give power of attorney or make a living will to protect the properties of your own identity, that is what you will be able to learn from someone who actually grew up in an analog way. Uh, who actually trained to be a carpenter. He was a taxi driver in Bielefeld in the 80s and 90s. And now for 25 years, he is part of chaos. He is esteemed in Hamburg for his clear attitude and his clear words. A wonderful cis buddy. So now listen to the wise words of our Jockel. Hi. Ich werde ein, äh, eine Reise mit euch machen. I will take you on a journey about the question why we treat people different to computers and what happens if you do not change the default properties and what could should be improved. And I think that despite this being a strange kind of topic to talk about the fact that we are going to die or the inability of dealing with that, we can still learn about ourselves and about others. And if we exchange that, then we can all extend because we are all going to die. That is eminently linked with the fact that we are born, that we are young, that we can do everything and so on. Well, we want to have fun too. Great. And we want to learn. At the computer, at some point you realize without backup, life is shit. And of course, you have your own properties in the computer. You don't have to change all the settings. Uh, you, everything is like you want it to be in that kind of home. But how about the human? Is there a backup for the human? I'm not talking about accelerando, other things. You backing yourself up digitally. There is an analog backup. Why do we actually have to care about this? The answer, Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. It doesn't matter though, because we keep learning how to deal with that. And you can turn this around. Iprom's law, everything that can work will work. Sometimes things work that shouldn't really work. And we then rely on it working, although actually, and so on and so on. And then things happen that explode that kind of assumption, things that we have no concept for, things that we haven't encountered yet. And I don't have to search very far. When I want to deal with what happens when a hacker runs into a problem, an accident, disease, the combination of this, a crisis. Bau Holland was 49, I think, when he had a stroke. And soon after that, he died. Back then, the desperation and cluelessness that was all around was something I felt because of course there was no power of attorney. Computer, backup, property. Computer, backup properties, human. The default is to be taken into care. That refers to both. 
So we need to look at that. What is that default? Care. What does that mean? Is that the guy who brings me a coffee? No. This is legal care, uh, not social care, not the carer in the home, the nurse in the hospital or something. There is an authority, a government department. I didn't know that before I started being a carer. And that authority determines and goes to the court and makes and communicates to the court and the court then commissions a carer, sets the task and a verification time period and will get people out of care again. Will end the period of care. The problems here are Carers are mostly self-employed by a um, organization, and they often have little time. This problem is called either generalization or uh, the uh, consolidation into a lump sum. But there is lack of time as a second problem. It's very stressful to reach these vital decisions in a short time. There is no personal, personal relationship because other than in Austria, I cannot select my own carer. And the job doesn't exist, at least not in Germany. And that has a whole heap of implications. So professional carers, uh, you turn into one or you, you are commissioned to become by the courts, but the profession doesn't exist. And that means that the carer is missing in the of paragraph 218 in the criminal code, and that is the paragraph on the obligation for confidence. If you are a journalist, a lawyer, a pedagogue, you have the obligation to remain silent, to keep things in confidence. And there is a penalty if you break that. But if you become a carer, you do not have this obligation, which means in a criminal procedure, the carer can be forced to testify against his client or her client. And they have to do this. They have no right to silence. And of course, that has huge implications. Also, the legal people that uh, carry this, uh, the three million people that are in care in Germany, uh, are determined by these legal people, because I think that's terrible, because these people are never asked anyway. That's the one thing. And to put the care above the person, I think, is completely unbearable. And that is one of the reasons why I stopped. There's a whole amount of information about this. You can read on this. Not such a good, not such a very nice read. And the alternative for the person, the alternative to default is power of attorney. And the alternative to properties is a living will, a patient's decree. Let's begin with the power of attorney. Of course, it exists in Austria, Switzerland and Germany, and it's differing everywhere. In Austria, it's a law to um, replace, uh, it's a law of replacement. It had a different name in the past, but now it's the same. In the past, it's also called um, adult replacement. 
In the Germany, I think it's Kera. So there are slight differences in wording and meaning, but that's in details. And I will just use the German case as default. So this authority, uh, this authority of attorney or power of attorney, I can give with a court. And I can give it to one or several people. And we know that it's known people. They know me. They don't have to wonder what I would want. They just have to remember. It has to be done in writing. And it's possible to register it, to, to document this properly. I think in Switzerland, I need to go to a notary. I don't think it's necessary in Germany. In context with this, I need to stress, I am not a lawyer. I'm not giving judicial advice. I'm just discussing something I know a little bit about. Otherwise, I could be punished. So registering this power of attorney or this authorization of care costs about 13 euros. I can just go to this department of the notaries or I can do it more locally and it's right with the people who need to get it then and it costs about 10 euros. The interesting thing is that normally there's a Q&A afterwards and we will do it a bit differently. I have a few questions for you. And if you can answer those, then you are a huge step ahead. Who do you trust? Who, should, who would you trust to take care of you if you're not well? Who knows you? Who is stress resistance enough? Would it be would it make sense to have several people or would they just argue and fight? That's very much up to the individual. And that's where the power of attorney or the this this letter this authorization is important, makes sense. So if you take a court-mandated carer, you might avoid certain conflicts, but conflicts can be solved. You should discuss this. Discuss this with each other. Talk about it. That's something everyone thinks about on their own. And only if it really comes to it, they talk about it, but you should do it earlier. You could get advice by lawyers and notaries, but you can also research yourself. There are other places, more local places, that are allowed to give advice, and it really fits on a very small place. So, the name and place where you live. Hereby, I give power of attorney in case I'm no longer able to do so myself to person, name, address, date of birth, to have power of attorney over my interests. It can include more, of course. If there is such a note giving power of attorney or giving power of care, then no caregiver is called upon by a court. And that's the point. What's more, we need a living will or patient's provision so you're not just handled like anyone else. To have this, you have to be of age, you have to be able to do official agreements. That means uh, you have to do it in writing. You have to do it in writing. 
You can mention all sorts of things, certain examinations, what you would want, what you wouldn't want, care, what you would want, what you wouldn't want, uh, what doctors are allowed to do or are not allowed to do. So for the point where you can't decide anymore but on your own, you can say, I don't want to be fed artificially, I don't want to be kept alive artificially, uh, just in case I can't talk anymore or communicate anymore. And the important thing is that it's um, guide, it gives guidelines to the doctors how they should treat you and how they shouldn't treat you. For example, in my will, I declared that I don't want to have a whole limbs removed. It is connected to my personal history and I declare that and I also explain it. And it's very much up to the individual. And because it's a very personal thing, we have to somehow connect it to the law. We have to put it in the frame of the law. So one small example in the paragraph 1901 in the uh, public uh, law book. I'm not reading it. In this paragraph, a caregiver is mentioned, but not the one given power of attorney. A power of will. But they handled the same. But I don't really get the last sentence. This power, uh, this living will can be taken back at any time without special form. But by whom? We don't know. Important in this context is that you yourself um, know your limits and your wishes so you can formulate it because at the moment when you lie there in a coma the doctor and whoever you declared your replacement has to talk and if they are in agreement it, the court isn't asked but if they are not in agreement it goes to court and it's the court that is applicable then and they decide there are online offers, so the Ministry of Health, they tell, uh, say the Ministry of Justice is applicable, then they, we have the consumer um, uh, people and a lot of people offer this service. But it's all just defaults, just uh, plug and play, but it doesn't harmonize with each other. No one takes care to put it together. It's just boilerplate. So it's structured, but not personalized. It, that really makes it difficult for me to click the correct thing because I clicked something else above, so why do I need to click on this, but I can't, and it's difficult. So those are guidelines for the caregiver and the doctors. Personal experience is important. So if I bring in why I want something, why I made a certain decision, why I don't want to be fed, or maybe I want to be fed, but only uh, not internally. So I know need to, to know how that works to be fed internally. And you can really learn a lot of just deciding and thinking about this and learning about this. But what do I want and how do I say it so that others will understand me? Also, this is something that you can handle in a discussion and you will learn a lot in the discussion. And you can find difficulties in understanding and increase understanding. And between what do I want and what do I not want, that's the whole space that has to be explored. What are my criteria? 
If I'm religious, if I have a certain worldview, if I'm atheist, whatever, then I need to show my criteria and that helps the people that maybe are not able to talk to me in the moment to take uh, to make the right decisions. We have to learn. Learn things. Understand things. And it's about all those things that are surrounding us all day. Some we even like. Learning is also remembering. Sometimes we forget things. Things we knew all the time that seemed normal to us. That were always there. So we just think they are given. They are not. We have to differentiate in our um, in our perception. So if I learn something, then maybe the person next to me would learn something different because they have a different background. They have a different history. So in this we can also help each other and fill in gaps. There are on alternatives. We don't have to use things for what they were meant. And I think that's also what defines is finding alternatives. Something that's not forbidden yet. It's about unsanctioned free spaces. And we can create those for the future by just uh, by not just going falling back on the default all the time. We can achieve good ways into the future. We have to find them, and they are very personal. So I'll summarize. Shit happens. Shit happens. Is so. That's a fact. Die Frage ist nicht, wie, the question is, isn't die Frage ist, wie wir whether that happens, but how we deal with it. Be prepared. Be prepared. Man kann ganz wunderbare Sachen machen, you can do wonderful wenn things. Man, uh, wenn man In Augenblick antizipiert, der irgendwann kommt. If you anticipate the moment that might come, I don't belt up in the car because I plan to be in an accident. In football, there always are goals scored after a free kick, although we have a goalkeeper. But that's no reason to do without the goalkeeper. You take a spare wheel with you, not because you plan to have a flat tire. And that's what I mean. It's not about being in complete awe and fear, but to be aware that these things can happen. And the nice thing is, you don't have to do it alone. We are all in communities where you can discuss things, where there are where, where there is experience, where there are people that like to sit down with you and think things through. Let's learn from each other and exchange the knowledge, something we can do quite well and do. Do. Thank you. Lieber Jockel. Dear Jockel, I know that I'm on air, but I'll have to sort my thoughts. The depth of your talk, what you said, and how you said it, is very impressive. And I see that in the chat 
in the pad, how many really severe, deep questions have come in. And I'm very much looking forward to give these questions to you so that in the short amount of time that we have, we can extend the issue. One of the first questions is on the organizational side, and it is, what actually is care? Well, care is installed at the time when someone is no longer able to ex exert their rights. If you, as an individual, it's a very simple example, you are in front of a bus, you, you run in front of a bus and you're in a coma, then for sheer medical reasons, sooner or later, provided you survive, you have to be intubated. Oh, sorry, you have to be extubated. The <clears throat> ventilation tube has to be extracted from your lung. So a cut into your throat is necessary. A small tube is inserted so that spontaneous breathing becomes possible again because the enforced breathing is shortly taken away, is, 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 is um, gradually taken away from you. You have to relearn to breathe. Now, this cut, this incision into your throat is bodily harm, but it's a permitted one if you, ha if you have signed that you are wanted to have a, an operation of some kind. And that a sense it is legally permitted. But this kind of bodily harm you cannot give a permit for because you're in a coma. You cannot sign, so someone else will have to sign for you. And in that moment, when that is necessary, the hospital goes ahead and um, applies for an emergency carer so that someone can go ahead immediately and give the signature so that legally they can make that incision into your <coughs> trachea, your throat. And the question, next question maybe fits this. What is the legal provision for the carer, the caring person, uh, not being under an obligation to secrecy? I cannot understand that. I can only report that that is the case and it's even more extreme i as a social pedagogue if i work in that profession in a children's institution or an institution for uh, mentally hand uh, for handicapped people i cannot talk about the sneeze that a child has contracted these are all medical data if i in a part-time job say for 20 hours a week i look after children, I cannot do that, but I can talk in epic breadth uh, about the, the issues that my clients have in, who are in care, because then there's no such obligation. It simply doesn't exist, because the profession doesn't exist, and because it is not in a catalog of uh, professions that are under obligation to secrecy. Next question. I read it first. I have learned that the power of attorney but it's not on a beer mat but not fully in the legal form was not accepted by the authorities at exactly the moment when immediate decisions were necessary can you name certain templates that are perhaps more elaborate than the beer mat can you recommend any of these well again uh, this is a matter for the individual case that refers to the individual case. If I want my power of attorney to look a certain way, mine has a single page only, much more detailed than the beer map, but it's 12 items on a single page, uh, so it's not that much. And I want it to, to look that way. Others might want to have it on a beer mat, and if they take that to the notary and, and have it confirmed by them, then that is a registered power of attorney. And if it, if it is a registered power of attorney, power of care, then there is no hesitating 
you simply have to find the most expensive and most available lawyer who will be very happy. There are all kinds of decisions for banks, for example, they have to accept this. And you then go for a, a, an injunction, perhaps. So no matter how it looks like, whatever material it's on, it is very individual. But with the seal of a notary, it is binding. Or with the seal of the authority, yes. What has to be in there is who is giving the power of attorney, whom it is given to, in what place und an Datum. and und sie muss at what time, in what, in which, on what, which day, and it has to have an original signature. Those are all the conditions, and that is possible on a beer mat. And that suits the next question very well. And I thank the, our signal angels for the way they have uh, sorted these questions. And by the way, many who are active here have either have ha do have the situation either in the immediate surroundings or they've had it. Okay, I'll continue. Uh, these powers of attorney are very individual and personal. Uh, and earlier on, you talked about the normally accepted templates that are, would be easy for getting these accepted, and that's a dilemma. But you always find the recommendation that the templates by the justice authorities and by the uh, Consumers Association could be used. Do you know these? What do you think of them? Well, personally, I have a very low opinion of them because I like to make my decisions as consciously as possible. And that means that I want to think about every sentence very closely and with uh, uh, as many knowledgeable people as possible. There are these structured templates that you can submit to, and that gets us to the issue of submission, and I don't like that. If I'm not well, I don't want that, and especially if I'm, if I'm well, I don't want that, and if I'm not well, I don't, especially do not want that. I would rather do what I, as an individual, would prefer. But that my very personal view, and everyone else who might have a different view and uh, might take a different decision, that is absolutely fine. But as I keep saying, you yourself have to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, yes, I'm going to sign this. So like yourself in the mirror as you shave the next day. That's how I would put it. Thank you for that. And maybe a maybe somewhat lighter organization question, do these powers of attorney or patient decrees have to be renewed every year? No, they don't have to. If uh, in five years your view might change about terminal cancer treatment, if it doesn't change in five years, then you do not need a new formulation. But what I do in principle, and I've experienced this myself, I had my stroke at the age of 47. I was very much more lucky than Val Holland was. I woke up after four days in a coma I was paralyzed on the right side. I was um, unable to speak without any memories, completely erased. I was so glad that I had two people that had the power of attorney, and they really saved my ass. So there is my patient's decree, and every time I go into hospital, you tend to have the odd operation now and then, by default, um, every time I go to hospital, I take my current power, my patient's decree with me, which is slightly modified or not. So I take that with me, and the staff, I, have, I make the staff sign it and make sure that they have a copy, because they need it. They have to do things according to my will, if I cannot tell them. And if they sign this as a witness, then it is clear that they have 
knowledge of this. Yes, and even if legally you don't have to renew it every year, it would perhaps be a good idea to look at it yourself and renew it in, at regular intervals and see whether it still applies. What was that stupid thing I wrote last year? And maybe I don't like the, the wording anymore or the spelling or this, the paragraph has to be sat somewhere else. But again, you deal with it at the time. You look at your heart, confront the issue and repeat it for yourself. That is something for you. That's something you want. But maybe this. So maybe this is a seemingly stupid question, but how do I know what I want? Can I decide that on my own? Or do I have to talk this over with others? Well, the only thing I have to do is die. Right? Everything else is optional. The point is, if I feel good with it, then it's okay. But my feeling okay with this, with it, I can test it by having it mirrored to me. So, with the person that I do trust, if I talk with them, is that how you know me? Is that so? Would you be able to do this if you don't feel well? And 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 so you always have to update it, and it has to be synchronized. And if I'm in the stack from two years ago and I haven't synchronized it in a while, then I should do that. It's the same with the um, living will or all these uh, documents. It's nothing written in stone. And the interaction with the person that you are later, when you are unable yourself, you have to trust them, and you do trust them. And I like this term, mirroring, and in the interaction, to take them with you and find a solution together. Yeah. And that is something that I can't create on my own. That's the result of talking with and and so talking and a process. It's a continuing process. Just like personality isn't just it becomes what it is. And always. So what happens if the person you trust is out themselves back to default? No. So you can't inherit such a power of attorney or such a, an authorization. So if they are unable to fulfill it, that's the interesting point. Maybe you could say, as a replacement, I want this person. Or within this authorization, you can also put in, I want. Hans Acker as authorized person and if that's not possible for some reason or if it becomes necessary by law, for example with housing contracts, only a caregiver ca may do that, buy and sell houses, for example. There are rules for that. If necessary, he should be ordered or commissioned as caregiver. You can write that into your authorization. That's the fallback then. So you have to look into it and research how you how to set it up securely. And there's a lot of information about that. There is the option of getting advice. And we can also talk about it collectively. Yeah, that also answers the question, can the authorized person, of my authorized person, also make decisions? Thanks for that. So, no. so how much does it help to have the uh, so, uh, the organ donation card, how much does that help? Or have the emergency contacts in my phone, how much does it help? Well, that doesn't have anything to do with 
authorization in the first place. Because if I have something on my phone without PIN and my emergency contacts are on there, that's public information. So whoever collects me from my car when I haven't had an accident or anything, whoever gets my phone, they can contact my mother, my sister, my friend, whoever. But I can't force them to do that. They can't just say, I, I don't have time to uh, call anyone now, I have to call an ambulance. An authorization is giving someone power in the moment I can't make decisions on my own and then someone else has the power and the authorization. So it's two different things and organ donation. An organ donation card is one thing, but this living will, this power of attorney, this authorization is something else. Organ donation has nothing to do with that. And if they contradict, then this authorization is what counts, as far as I know. I will resist this cheap joke that we don't have time, but time is running. So, this pad with questions is filling up and running over. So, now the small hint that this topic will definitely be continued in the breakout room. You can find the link to it below the tab in, or with the tab info. And if we have to close up here because the next talk is coming, of course, we will definitely continue in the bracket room. But one more question. What do I do if the person that I trust not... So if the person I trust doesn't want to talk about the topic, what do you say? Well, talk to someone else. I mean, it doesn't make sense to force someone who is not interested in the topic. If they refuse, if they push it away, because last year his father died, or I don't know, there are a thousand legitimate reasons not to want to talk about it. And the most important thing is, and I always think of Timothy Leary, you should not alter the consciousness of your fellow man. You have to accept if someone doesn't want it. So if they don't want, they don't want. So I can't have them in that moment. So they are not in the pool of people I can trust anymore. I can trust with this. I don't. I can't want them to replace me in this case. But you also give that person an opportunity to think about these topics themselves. So maybe they are facing the situation just in thoughts. So it could hit the person themselves and they could grow on it. Not for you, or not for the person, but they could be in the topic and think about it at least once. Well, I'm a social pedagogue. You can get over it. And I always try to understand. Sometimes I don't want to understand. And that's okay too. So if someone doesn't want to face something, then it's not time for them. The question is, can I build bridges? Can I pave a path for them? Do I have something to give them? Maybe they give something back with openness, with being ready to face something even though they can't in the moment. But then you have to take smaller steps. And it's not about decisions. I have an operation tomorrow, open heart surgery, and I need someone now. This decision has to be done well in advance. Yeah, thanks for this great um, uh, wording with the bridges because we have to stop now. But if I see how many more questions are in the pad, I promise 
all of us, we will see again, see each other again in the break room. I do have to do the closing now, unfortunately, but I wish all the beings that took part that we meet each other again in the breakout room. Thank you everyone for your attention. We will meet again. Thank you.